What's up, guys? Welcome to another Ask Matt, number 25. Uh, I feel like I just did the first one. wasn't that long ago, but I guess it was a while ago now. That actually reminds me, it's about to be my one-year anniversary of being on YouTube. I think it was July 22nd was my very first YouTube video. So we've come a long way, so I'm extremely grateful for all of you that actually watch and enjoy it and get value from it. Uh, that was always my hope from the beginning, and like I've said a million times, it happened way quicker than I expected, so I truly, truly appreciate that. Uh, what else, what else as we wait? As per usual, if you're watching the replay, feel free to skip a couple minutes to the actual questions or just hang out with me in the meantime, but uh, either way, hit that like button, it makes a big difference whether you're here live or you're watching the replay, but yeah, the questions will start once people start piling, piling in. I will say, if you are here live or watching this within the next uh, 30 hours, the uh, my Prime Day special for Zero to Brand is still going. It's ending really soon. It's ending Saturday night at midnight. That's Saturday, July 21st at midnight, Saturday night. So the link is the first one in the description of this video on YouTube. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's a beefy discount, so you're gonna wanna get in there while I'm running that. It's the first time it's ever been on sale. That's all I'll say for now, but uh, definitely check that out because if you have been considering getting in, now is definitely the time. So, yeah, I already see some questions starting to pop in, so I might take some more casual ones and then people will, we're only a minute and 30 in, but people are already going, so thank you guys for being in here. And yeah, you know, just start hitting me up with questions. I'm gonna start with this non-Amazon question. Or actually, there's two non-Amazon questions. Three now. So I'll start with those to let people get in for like the more uh, business-focused one. Uh, first one I see is, love to hear your morning slash evening routine. So I am one of those total nerds for the morning routines and the evening routines, kind of a la Tim Ferriss. I think he kind of kick-started the whole morning routine epidemic. Uh, so I'm all about it. Uh, and this ties in with another question. Do you drink salt with lemon in the mo drink water with salt and lemon in the morning? So that's the first thing of my morning routine. Uh, I drink a big glass of spring water with Celtic sea salt, lime, and sometimes not every single day, apple cider vinegar. I go out onto my balcony right here and I get some sun in my face. First thing, this is before I even go outside, which is soon after. Uh, then the next few parts, I kind of like rearrange them in different orders. Some days I do all of them, some days I do half of them, and they're always sort of being interchanged in the order. But um, one would be meditation. Usually I'm only up to five, 10 minutes. Sometimes I do that inside, sometimes I do that outside. Um, journaling, I'll do two to three pages of just free journaling. Um, and then depending on the order, I always wanna go outside and get just as much sun and light and fresh air as I can. Sometimes I jump into the ocean first thing too, and uh, then make my Bulletproof coffee. Lately I've been doing decaf Bulletproof coffee just to experiment with no caffeine, which was a great experience because I realized I was dependent on caffeine because I felt pretty tired for a few days. So that is sort of my mixed up morning routine. It's not in the exact same order every single day. Maybe it should be, but it's usually just like which ones most days I do a good amount of those, but I it takes so long if I were to do all of them that now I kind of like pick and choose which I feel like that day. Maybe I don't feel like journaling today, but I'll meditate. Maybe I don't feel like, maybe I don't get to meditate, but I, you know, go outside for a little longer or something like that. That was kind of long, but I'm a super nerd about the morning routines. I'm curious, leave your morning routine in the comments. Um, and one more little, <laughs> how did you learn about vintage watches? Uh, I actually had a friend that knew way more than me, so that was extremely, extremely helpful. I was getting into them because I was reselling them. I was already into watches, but I got really deep into it sort of simultaneously with reselling them, which allowed me to just really learn about the vintage watch market, what to look out for, what's good, what's good and what's bad. So that was really how I learned about, about that. Yo, what's up, Matt? Launched first product about three weeks ago. Been doing heavy PPC and getting about one sale per day. What else can I do to get some traction? Hmm. Uh, how heavy of PPC? Because, it, I mean, to go heavy on PPC and have only one sale per day sounds like there's some issue going on for sure. So I would probably, before thinking about things to increase traffic, I would think about the other end of the funnel, which is conversion rate. So you might have a conversion rate problem if you're already 
pouring a lot of money into getting people into your listing, but they're not converting into sales. So I would monitor your conversion rate and see what you could do to optimize that. We're talking photos, title, bullets, description, all of that stuff that actually convinces the, the potential customer to buy yours. Maybe an issue there if you're really going heavy on PPC. Uh, maybe your definition of heavy is not that heavy, so I would probably need to know some more details, but you should start out aggressively, especially at the beginning. Uh, well, always too, because that ties in with something I feel strongly about, which is everyone always wants to tone down their PPC too soon. I think you need to use it as a marketing tool and keep pushing it. So uh, yeah, I hope that helps, but you should look into more forms of marketing, absolutely. But I think just based on the way you asked it, I'm concerned there's a conversion problem. So my mind goes there before it goes to ways of getting more traffic. What business form did you set up for your FBA and do you take a salary out from your business? Uh, yes, I do take a salary because I am set up as an LLC taxed as S corporation and S corporations, you have to have a reasonable salary, meaning you get paid a salary as if you're an employee of your own company. So I do that. It just has to be reasonable, which means I try to choose the lowest salary I can. So mine is at for that. It's at like it's still at 5,000 per month, but then I'll just pay myself more if I want to, just write myself a check basically. But yeah, LLC taxed as an S corporation. I think that's the move once you're profiting into the six figure range. Well, we got lots more people. Be sure to hit that like button if you're in here now. Really appreciate it. it, really does make a big difference. And I will just say, just a few little reminders throughout the video that if you're catching this, that Zero to Brand Prime Day special is still going through tomorrow night. So don't miss out if you wanted to get in there. I, If you're planning on getting in there, I don't want you to miss out. So just wanna let you know that is there. Let's see. How many products per brand would you do before doing a second brand? I think this is a question that doesn't have an exact answer. It's always going to be what is the best opportunity in front of you right now? Now, I always sort of preach and recommend launching products that are in line with your first product because there's a lot of advantages that comes with that. You can leverage your existing listings, you can leverage your existing customer bases, there's so much you can do there, but if you see a bigger opportunity in a second brand than than the next product in your first brand, then by all means go for it. So whether that's your, maybe that's your second product, maybe your first product doesn't really lead to a brand and you see a bigger opportunity, go for it. Maybe you see 20 opportunities before you ever start a second brand, maybe you never start a second brand. So I think it just depends on like what opportunities you see in front of you and which one seems to be the best use of your resources. Is it easier to pay someone to make a Shopify store for you or should you do it yourself? Uh, Shopify is easy. What you should do is just buy a theme. There are, there's free themes and there's paid themes. Uh, for me, I've only used the paid ones because I mean, I don't know, they're a hundred or 200 bucks and you can get something beautiful. You just edit it out yourself. You can totally, you can totally do it yourself even if you don't have any like techie sort of uh, experience. Hey Matt, is it normal for sales to slow down for a couple days after major days, major Amazon days like Prime Day? I've been selling for about a month and the last couple of days have been slow, it seems. I would say it's normal. I think it does depend on your product and your industry. Sometimes there's like that afterglow effect where you continue to sell at higher momentum, but I've also had the opposite happen. Uh, and for me, and I'm curious if anyone agrees, but it seems like the last, I don't know, year or two, there's been more drop off after the major days like that. And it coincided with Amazon adding the the lightning deals for like Black Friday week or Prime Day week, for example. And those ones I always say are a total waste of money. Meaning if you're trying to do a Cyber Monday sale and they're like, hey, we'll give you the deal on Cyber Monday week, Wednesday, I always say just cancel that. Like it's it's not Cyber Monday week, it's just two days after Cyber Monday and everyone's done, everyone's back to normal or maybe below normal because everyone's just spent all their money on Cyber Monday, which is very real. So I think it's totally normal. If I've learned anything in, in the years of these Amazon businesses, it's that like, you know, do your best to not freak out at like a one or two day trend. I've so many times, uh, years ago, I've gotten better at this, but 
uh, people like you would always see your sales drop a little bit and you're just like, oh my God, what happened? All this stuff, you're just panicking. You don't know what you did. You try changing things. And a lot of times it's just, there's a lot of ups and downs. You know, maybe it's just a lower traffic day on Amazon. Maybe it's just something in the world that is making your product less, um, less in the current mind of people and they're not looking for coffee products right now. I don't know. It's just, there's a lot of, there's a lot of variables. So try not to like, take a small picture and extrapolate out this whole big crazy story in your head, it's probably fine. It usually is. Least number of products to do a million dollar a year. I mean, there's people that do it with one. That's not really my strategy, nor is it what I have accomplished. Um, I probably had, I don't know, 15 to, tw I probably had like 15 to 20 different SKUs by the time I was hitting seven figures. Uh, or maybe a little less. I'd have to think back to exactly what I had that year. And if we're counting it from the beginning of the year or the end of the year, because I was launching products throughout that year, that that was the big thing for me. Like I got there by launching and launching and launching. So the year that I was adding the most products was the year that my business scaled from, you know, I did, I did about a quarter million in sales in 2015, but then I did um, 1.2 million in 2016 and that was because that year I was just like scaling out my product lines Matt just bought your course oh my god so much great content how how but how is the multiple payments done oh well, first off, I'm glad you think it's awesome. Uh, I also think it's awesome. I did my best I possibly could to make it as valuable and digestible as possible. If you do one of the payment plans, it's auto build. So you're committing to it up front and then it's just gonna bill you like, if you do a three month plan, it's just like one month, two month, three month billing. So it's automatic. If, if you sign up through a payment plan, you don't have to worry about it. It's just gonna bill, it's gonna bill you uh, on, that, on that payment cycle. So, and then, also, don't worry, I've realized I should say this to clarify. If you do use a payment plan, you have you have access continuously. It's not like a it's not like a subscription, it's like you're paying for it in installments. So you still get it, like you get full access and you don't lose it. You're just pay you're just splitting up the payment of it. So it's exactly the same as paying for it in one. You're just spreading it out and yeah. If I lower my prices, trying to get sales boost for reviews, will that tank the prices in my niche? Um, it could be, but I don't know if your one product is going to have that much impact on all the people around you. Uh, it depends how big or small your niche is. If it's very small, then yeah, it's possible that one or two other sellers might kind of panic and lower their prices and freak out. But you know, most likely, well, it, I guess it just depends on the size, but in a bigger niche, that definitely wouldn't happen. So uh, yeah. But you can try that, though I would warn you to be careful that a lot of times doing a deep discount does not necessarily lead to as many sales as you would think. So I'm all for like a light discount on a launch and, and promoting and marketing and doing stuff like that, absolutely. But you know, if you just come out the gate with your price cut in half, your, your product might sell worse because now you might just look like you have a worse product. So be careful with that. It's not a bad strategy, but it's, it's one to be careful with. My launch failed as I've been staying on page four for broad keyword. I stopped the launch and been doing average 15 sales a day without PPC. What can I do next to get on top page? Well, 15 sales a day with no PPC is a tremendous success, first of all. So whatever you did had some impact. I mean, the my this would be a very long explanation, so I'll give the short, the short one, but my my um, definition of ranking is not about being on page one for one keyword. Sure, that has big impact, but clearly you are ranking somehow, right? Where are those 15 sales a day coming from if you're not driving ads? It's because you're ranking throughout the entire Amazon system somewhere. People are finding you from a whole bunch of other keywords. They're finding you from frequently bought together. It sounds like you have already started to push through that system, which to me, that's my definition of ranking. It's not just about one single keyword. Sure, one single keyword could be very, very important, but it's more important to have that to have that web going through Amazon. So it sounds like you're on a great place. So I would, first off, I would say you gotta start pushing with PPC again. You gotta crack that, you have to figure that out because there's a lot there. 
for anyone. I mean, there might be a couple niches where it just really doesn't make sense, but in 99 out of 100 cases, there's something valuable you can do with PPC. That may not mean running PPC profitably, but it may mean using it as a ranking tool or, or, or a tool to get yourself out there through that web more. So I would go there first. Um, you know, the, the rank on page one method, I'm sure you already know, but that is to drive a bunch of sales through one keyword. So you could do that if you have some sort of marketing or launch list, whether you're doing Facebook ads, whether you're doing whatever it is that you may have done for your first launch, you have to do more sales through one keyword to boost up the ranking of that one keyword. Now PPC plays into that too, but 15 sales, zero PPC per day. I mean, if you're, if you're at like a typical $10 profit per product, uh, roughly, then you're, I mean, you're talking $150 a day with zero ad spend. I mean, wow, that's a great platform to start with. So you've got some serious like potential there and it's going great. And I would say launch more related products, figure out how you can scale it up with ads, all of that because you're in a great position. Another comment of hit the thumbs up. I always appreciate when you guys help me out because sometimes I forget to ask. So that is awesome. Hey Matt, what is your refresh rate on your Amazon seller app in a day? Two to three times or like me, 100 to 150 times a day. I would say two years ago, I would refresh so much. It was very unhealthy, but that was where I was in my business at that time. I was all about the grind and the hustle and I had to check, I had to monitor everything because I had to be very attentive and fix everything and 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 notice every nuance. Now I've got to a point where it, it, it I, I don't have to do that because I've I planted those seeds a long time ago and now I can enjoy where it's at. So now there are days where I don't check. Like I have, I don't, yeah, no, I didn't even log in today for, yet, for example. Uh, so I've gotten way better at that. Um, yeah, like, and I think it's healthier to sort of take a broader picture, but I also understand, and I was there, is like in the early days, in that first year, when you're growing and you're putting a lot into it, I think you should check a lot, you know, try not to check 150 times a day, but you know, if you're checking every couple hours or so, I think that's good to keep your, what's the phrase, like keep your finger on the pulse, right? Like, you know, I think that's good. Thoughts on apparel business on Shopify, totally different from my model. So first off, I'm not really that qualified to answer this. I think it sounds hard. For me, it sounds hard. I wouldn't want to really do that. I think there are a ton of apparel brands and they're all fighting for that. So to me, that sounds really hard. Can you make it work? I'm sure, but I, I, would, I don't think I would be very confident in myself to do that. So yeah. Let's see, looking for some good questions. As I look, tiny reminder, that Prime Day link is still live through Saturday night. That's tomorrow night. So don't miss that if you would like. Let's see, looking for some interesting ones. So it's not too repetitive. Hang in there one second. Would you invest in a product if there was no room for improvement? there's probably always some room for improvement, right? Uh, if you're talking no physical change, then you're talking about marketing and branding and positioning and information. There's always something you can do to be better than those competitors, and that is improving the product. The product is an experience. So if you can't change the physical product that much, then you can still do that and you can still differentiate in other ways. Now, maybe down the line, maybe a few years later, or maybe less than that, but if you have a profitable first product that's identical, maybe you then roll those profits into truly engineering or changing a product more dramatically so that you can really dominate that niche. Have you started to invest outside of Amazon? Um, I mean, you guys can see me diversifying. I'm, I'm doing a lot of different things now. I, Amazon was my only income stream for a solid three years. And before that, it was just eBay and flipping and stuff like that. So, um, but invest, when you use the word invest, I think of passive investments, uh, even things like real estate or, or like stocks and stuff like that. And I really haven't got to that point because all of my cash, I have a lot of cash tied up in inventory and in the businesses, like in the accounts ready to deploy in my businesses. Uh, Cause to me, that's the best ROI for me at this point. Now, I definitely wanna to get to a point where I can just dump a whole bunch of money into 
into investments because I think that's how you achieve true financial freedom is when your passive investments outweigh your living expenses. That's true financial freedom. I'm not at that definition of financial freedom because I don't have those passive investments. But for me right now and for you right now, like imagine this, like like let's say, there, let's say there's $50,000, right? And let's say it's sitting in my business account or in your business account. Sure, you could go invest that at an 8% return and make uh, you know $4,000 per year or whatever, right? So that would be a passive investment. You put your $50,000 in, you make $4,000 per year. That's a, that's a passive investment. But to me and to you guys, like when we're talking about things like Amazon businesses and all this other stuff, when I think $50,000, I'm like, holy crap. Like $50,000 is more than enough to launch a seven figure business. I mean, you have to go, you have to, to me, it's like, just put that money into yourself. I'm going to invest once I have like a lot of extra money that I can just like, okay, sure, I'll plop a whole bunch of money over there and make that passive investment. But for me right now, I just see bigger opportunities in in uh, putting my money into myself, into businesses, into, into new things that I can touch and have control over. Any updates on your new brand? Uh, not too much. I've been a little slacking on that, but it, I am about to start really, uh, really pushing for that. I mean, that's I see that as defining my next phase of entrepreneurship. It's going to be a brand I'm very passionate about. It's going to be, I'm. I, it's going to be tied to me. Like my identity is involved with this brand, and it's something that I want to build for not one or two years and sell it or make you know a few hundred thousand a year or whatever. This is a brand that I want to maybe never, like maybe, maybe I build it forever. Like maybe it's just my thing forever. So I'm putting a lot of thought into it up front, but I've got to get going. So I, I appreciate that you guys keep asking about it because it kind of makes me think, oh yeah, crap. Like I told people I'm doing this thing and then I have no updates. I've just been tied up and stuff and, and taking some time to relax and uh, you know, all that, which is great. And that's important stuff. And that's what I'm all about with entrepreneurship. I'm not about the 24 seven grind. I'd rather build and craft the life that is exactly what I want. Um, but I do want that to be the next phase of what I'm really focused on. Like I'd like that to be the biggest proportion of the actual work that I do would be on to that new brand and new business. How do you establish yourself with, with a luxury brand? Um, hmm. I think, are you, I mean, are you talking in the context of Amazon or just in general, but either way, luxury brand is just even more about brand. It's kind of everything that I talk about just to the extreme. Like you have to really show your value proposition. You have to show that you are elite and yours is not just another random thing like everybody else's. So it comes down to all the same things, photos, information, marketing, all of that stuff, but you have to really position it in a certain in a certain light to show that yours is worth two, three x the price. If you couldn't do Amazon, what type of online business would you get into? Drop shipping, affiliate marketing, etc. Um, yeah, I've I've wondered what I would do if I was starting right now, and um, I'll give two little answers. The first one that popped into my head is not necessarily what I would actually do or did do by any means. But like, I do think affiliate marketing is easy to make money. Like for example, let's take my course as an example. Like my course, the Zero to Brand course has an affiliate program. When people buy the course, if they like it, they can give out their link and make money from it. I think literally every single person that has made a YouTube video of, of about my course has made back their money at least. Meaning like the invest, like that's how much they're making just off of throwing their link out there on YouTube videos. Uh, and that's just an example, but like, I find that is easy, especially like high ticket stuff like that when the commission is, you know, a, a pretty significant amount of money and you don't need that many sales to make money. I see that as highly easy. Now, I don't consider myself like an ex expert affiliate marketer by any means. The only affiliate experience I have is managing my own affiliate program for, for the course. Um, and I'm an affiliate for like all the software and stuff down there that I use. Uh, but I've never done it that way, but I just see how seemingly easy it is in a lot of cases. Uh, yeah, uh, that one comes to mind. But now what I actually would recommend and what I actually did, and it's funny because it's not on your list and I think nobody talks about it, is I would do reselling before I would do drop shipping or affiliate marketing or anything like that. Reselling has like no risk, very little investment. 
um, you know, it's that raw hustle. It's not scalable, but it's the perfect thing to do at the beginning when you're just trying to build up cash. So then you can leverage it into these things that are higher risk, but can also scale if it really works. So that's the way I see it is like, do the unscalable thing until you can have money to play with and throw it into things that are scalable, like, uh, like Amazon FBA, for example. So that would be my answer, resell, you know, hustle Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, whatever all those other ones are, and find something that you can buy at one price and resell at another price. <clears throat> How do you conquer inaction and fear? Um, for me, it's thinking about the alternative. So. To me, the biggest fear I have is not going for it. To me, that's terrifying. And I can't, I'm constantly dumbfounded by the fact that people aren't going for it. And I understand people have their own situations. I totally understand. But you need to be making steps to be able to go for it. Because what are you afraid of? Like to me, I'm afraid of being complacent and not doing anything and never achieving what I, never achieving a fraction of what I could. So, that is my motivation is like, you have to. <laughs> what if the only way to differentiate is through packaging, but packaging gets expensive, ROI drops a lot. Yeah, potentially, um, you know, I do think it's a good way to, of differentiating, but maybe you don't have to do something that expensive. Maybe you're looking at something too expensive. There's always gotta be something minor you could do that's not crazy expensive and is more doable. <laughs> nice salamandrin shirt yeah you notice skipping a few so if I miss you if I miss your question just ask again um, let's see let's see <clears throat> which tasks do you delegate to your VAs and at what point would you suggest to start hiring a VA for me it's um, at this point my VA his main work is actually on my like personal stuff more than on Amazon at this point because that's just been, I've bombarded him with that. So my VA is actually does video editing at a very high level. So if you see my YouTube videos and you think they look good, that's because of him, not because of me. I just hold the camera around, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, so that, anything graphic design, he's a graphic designer. So he does all the design work, photo editing, uh, uploading photos to Amazon. Um, started with that stuff and customer service. So he still does all of that. So the first thing to me to outsource, and this was what I did was customer service. And that I got lucky that came with graphic design too, because the same guy was super capable of both. That might not always be the case. So I would say customer service is like the first one to get off your plate. And it's like a good practice to teach you to delegate because chances are, unless you've already built a very big business, the, the customer service is probably not taking you that much time but to be able to get that off your plate is like a nice, it, it's a good first step to delegation. How do I sign up to your affiliate program? Uh, you have to be a member of my course, which is having the Prime Day deal, once again, I will say. Uh, but people that are members of the course can be affiliates. So as of right now, like, I mean, I guess we don't get into that, but I don't want just anybody being an affiliate. I want it to be people that like, you know, paid for it and enjoyed it and got value out of it and feel it's worthy of spreading the word. I don't want people to just, if you just open up to everyone, then you'll get people that just want to spam it everywhere. That's not what I want. I want people that like are quality people. Like for example, my top affiliate is Samer Brax, who a lot of you have probably seen because uh, he has a YouTube channel that has now surpassed mine, uh, which is amazing. Uh, so he was one of my first students and uh, he's made a lot of money as being an affiliate, for example. Uh, yeah. Paul says, is this on the new camera? No, I'm still doing the live streams on the Sony a7S II. Uh, the recent vlogs have been on a Canon G7X Mark II because I don't always want to grab this big heavy thing and take it with me, so yeah. Bradley Williams, buy low, sell high. Yeah, that's what we're all about. What was your net income last year? Uh, like three something. 300 something thousand, just to clarify. Uh, would you do reselling if you couldn't sell on Amazon? I'm just asking because my US account got expended doing online arbitrage. I wouldn't at this point, but it depends where you are financially and what you need. I think it's great if you just need to make some money. Yeah, I think it's the best. Uh, I don't think you're gonna make a ton of money doing it, 
but it's it's enough to live on and to be able to maybe save up so you can do something else with it but for me at this point like i think i have much better opportunities uh but i think it's a really good place to to start looking for a few more you know you're doing it right when your audience is saying to hit the thumbs up yeah I appreciate it. I appreciate, even if you're not saying it, I still appreciate you, by the way. Hey Matt, I was curious how much your course costs. So it's always 997, so a thousand bucks. That's what it is because there's a lot of value in there. It is much more thorough and in depth and organized than some other potential ones that you might be considering instead. In my personal opinion, I put way more, I put a ton of time into making it like that and I have a lot of experience in this business, of course. So I struggled to just make sure that everything in there was absolutely as as concise as it could, as it could be. I got distracted because Bradley Williams gave me $4.99, holy crap. I'll get to that in one sec. Thank you, dude. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, what was I even saying that was so distracting? That's so cool. What do I have to do for it? Uh, oh yeah, how much does the course cost? Yeah, so it's usually nine ninety seven, but this week uh, I won't even say in the live just because people might be watching this later. But the link is the first one, and it's the only discount I've ever done since doing it, and it's a big one. So go check that out before uh, before this Saturday night. Go check it out now because it's going to end really soon. Um, let me see. Brad just said. Brad's a friend of mine. When are you going to buy a Tesla faster than Rob's? Uh, well, any Tesla is faster than Rob's. I mean, didn't he get the slowest one? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, if I got a Tesla, I'd definitely get, pro I'd probably get a Model X or the P100D. Uh, but I don't see that happening pretty soon. I, I think that I'd get other cars before I'd get a Tesla, but I love Tesla. Uh, I love the exotic impractical cars but then on the other hand i i think something like tesla would be the perfect like daily commuter type of thing let's see let's see let's see your prime day link is full price uh no it it should not be uh if you're seeing that maybe clear your cookies you might be loading a, a previous page uh it's definitely not 9.97 uh, just for the next day, uh, but that is the usual price. If you have an issue, just contact me after this. Just send me a Facebook message, anything like that. I'll make sure that uh, I'll make sure that you get the right uh, the right price. Um, I'm not sure what this is referring to. Are you allowed to manually make payments before or after an automated charge? I'm not quite sure what you're referring to there. Uh, I bought Matt's course. It's more than worth nine ninety seven. I really appreciate that, and that was that was actually my intent with it. Was I wanted to build one of I wanted to build a course that was like a, a three thousand dollar course and sell it for a thousand dollars. I didn't want to I didn't want to do the opposite, which would be a very very simple easy one and then sell it for you know much less. I wanted it to be the only one you would need. So one thing that surprises me the most is how many people take mine and tell me that it's not the first one they took. That surprises me a lot. Uh, but luckily, and what I'm proud of is. I haven't had anybody tell me that they took mine and then had to go take another one. So uh, I, I take that as a, I, I really appreciate hearing stuff like that. How many people are in your course? Uh, it's somewhere around 250 or so, maybe a little more because not everyone joins the private group. Uh, that's, I mean, some people just don't choose to do that. So it's somewhere in like the 250, maybe slightly above range at this point. Uh, but the group is very tight knit. Uh, it's you know, it's not, you're not getting flooded like the public group. So yeah, it's definitely not, it's definitely more focused for sure. Thinking about joining. Yeah. Awesome. Biggest risk with FBA business. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, there's always risk. I mean, and that's part of something that I say that is maybe different than a lot of stuff that people might hear, uh, is that there are risks to this business. Like, absolutely. Like you could pick a, Hor like you could, if you do things wrong, if you're not following the right steps, like you could severely mess up and lose a lot of money. Or sometimes you just pick a product and it might never get off the ground. Now, the good thing about that is a lot of failures are like break even, or it takes longer than you thought, or it's slightly profitable but not worth doing. That's like most failures. To me, like the biggest failure would be like losing all of your money, which is 
honestly, I was going to say impossible, but it's pretty close to impossible if you're really like taking the right steps with inspections and things like that. Like you're not going to lose all of your money uh, unless you really mess up. So yeah, yes, get the Model X. It's sweet. I love the doors. I'm all about the doors. PPC, what would you do with keywords that generate 80% of your sales but are not profitable by ACOS? If it's close to profitable or just, I, I would keep it going. Like let's say your profit margin was 40% and your A, and your ACOS was 50%, I would absolutely keep that going. Uh, if your ACOS is, you know, 120%, now you've, you've got to probably tone it down a bit. So, yeah. Does my paid comment show to everyone or just to you? I'm not sure. Did you guys see that or did I just only see that? Um, I don't know. It's full price. I just went to sign up. Huh. That's really weird, guys. Um, just ma just go to zero to brand course dot com slash prime day. Open a new browser or something. Maybe you, if you've gone to the site before, it's possible that it could be like a cookies thing and it's loading the pri the previous version. If you're having that issue, just contact me. I'll make sure to fix it up for you. Just contact me on Facebook or in the comments. I'll I'll make sure. Don't even worry about it. Uh, but we'll definitely we'll definitely fix that. Oh my God, another five bucks. Dang, making $9.99 on these live streams. I should just do this full time. I heard brand to zero was legit. That's the paid comment. That's amazing. Yeah, if you guys don't know what that's talking about, it's like this inside joke that I think is freaking hilarious. It was uh, Jade, Jade Dharma Wangza. If you don't know she, who she is, you should definitely check out her channel. She is a killer at social media, personal branding, Instagram. And when we met up, she accidentally called my course brand to zero instead of zero to brand. So now I just think it's hilarious. Like I, we were making all these jokes, like I will take your brand and take it to zero, which is not true, but uh, that would be a really funny parody. So that's, that's what that means if you didn't know, but I think it's hilarious. Man, I appreciate all these course comments. I, I, I hope I'm not talking about it too much. You guys know I don't like to do that too much, but another one, get the course people. It is worth it. More detailed than another I bought previously. I really appreciate that. Uh, I'm just I'm just glad that you guys are getting value from it. That That's what it's there for, you know? That's why I'm happy and proud of it is because I think that you'll get the value out of it. You know what I mean? Like, you'll feel it was worth it. So, and that's, and if you don't, like, you know, let me know because that's what I want. I want you to get your value out of it. So this is not, and this is something I apply in physical products. So I'll go on this little rant for a second because I think there's something valuable here, but everything should be, everything in business or in life, but maybe let's really zoom out here. It should always be fair exchange. Like you're giving something in return and it's fair. Like it shouldn't be about tricking people. So a lot of people on Amazon, for example, they want to like trick their customers into making a profit. It's like, no, you should be offering a great product that your customers are happy to pay 25 bucks for, even though you bought it in China for six bucks. Like that's business. That's good business. So same thing here with the course. That's exactly my intention is like, I want people to buy this thing, whether like at $997 and think, wow, that was worth more. Like that's, that's what I'm shooting for here. Uh, and that's just my philosophy in business in general. Um, so, and I think that's a really good one just for being a good person and just for, you know, providing real value. So something to keep in mind with any type of business. Um, I have a private label account with my C Corp and DBA for my brand. Can I use the same C Corp EIN to make a second account to use for wholesale? If you're going to have a second account, I don't want to misspeak here, but if you're going to have a second account, you're going to have to have a separate legal entity, most likely to get actual approval from Amazon. So I would say no, though there might be some weird way of getting around that. But I would say if you're going to have a separate Amazon account, you're going to want to have separate everything, meaning banking, company, and including EIN. Make sure it says Prime Day at the end. Yeah, for that link, if it's not working, zero to brand course, spelled out, dot com slash Prime Day. Uh, that should be the link in the description right now. And if it's not working, just let me know. Um, I'll definitely fix that up for you guys. But definitely should be working. What is the reason for adding salt in your water that you drink in the morning. Yeah, salt is, well, so I eat a very low carb, mostly ketogenic diet, which when you're when you're eating like standard American diet, you're probably getting a lot of sodium. But when you're eating like a very clean sort of diet that I do, it's actually very common to be deficient in sodium, which sodium 
is, I don't want to get too technical, nor can I remember the details. It's been a while since I've been in school, but sodium is essential to like neurons firing and so many things in your body. Like it's not all bad. So you need sodium and sodium in the morning, you're dehydrated when you wake up. It helps you absorb more water. It helps kick kickstart your, your adrenals. It just makes you just ready to freaking go. Like it's basically, I wouldn't call it an energy drink, but it's like something, it's an essential mineral that your body needs. And having that first thing in the morning, I just find it feels great. So a lot of people do that right now. Um, and yeah, I, I think you should do it. There, try it. Let me know. Paul says, click the link in the description. Yeah. I want a commission for starting this donation trend. Dude, let, let's talk. <laughs> Uh, I got the question about the C Corp. Yeah, yeah. Cleared my cookies and browsing data and it shows the Prime Day deal. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Uh, that must just be because we updated the link. Or, I don't know. I'm not the technical guy. Maybe Paul can tell you why that would be happening, but not quite sure. But, but yeah. You don't need a separate LLC for a second account, just a separate email, credit card, and bank account. You can use the same LLC. Well, you do need to tell them that you have a legitimate reason. So I'm curious, like what other legitimate reason you gave for approval. Uh, but I'm sure there are some sort of loopholes, as I said. Samer, what's up, dude? Can we talk about health brain optimization for beginners, starting with no clue? Yeah, this is something, it's funny, because as I've gotten, as I've been on YouTube talking about Amazon for longer and longer, I think I've sort of refined the way I talk about it. I'm obsessed with this stuff, but I'm still not good at like, conveying it to people like I don't know where to start and I, I just feel like I overwhelm people and I say all this weird stuff and like uh, I feel like you know basically the, the short version is like there are so many things that are in our environment that are toxic to us and so it's about having a lot lifestyle that is doing things that allows your brain to function at maximum capacity so you know that's simple things like getting your sleep right is a huge one you know getting that eight hours of sleep at least for me it's at least i usually get more like nine uh which you can optimize your sleep by no blue light at night whether you're wearing blue blocking glasses or you're just not looking at any lights you know leave the lights off at night it's going to help you sleep better don't check your phone in the middle of the night stuff like that um you know water i don't want to go crazy on this because some people may not care let me know but um you know, like I don't drink tap water because there's all kinds of toxins and stuff in tap water that can be messing with your brain and messing with all other, all, all other aspects of your biology. So it's really about just taking this holistic overall picture because there are things in everything, whether it's your, uh, whether it's your hygiene products that have stuff in it that could be toxic to you uh, because a lot of that stuff is just a mess. It's a disaster. So starting with that, there's so many diet things um, for brain health. Uh, you know, for decades, um, fat was demonized. Really, that's not true. It's just that some fats are freaking terrible for you. And some fats are literally like the substance of what your brain is built on. So, you know, adding in good, healthy fats, cutting out very unhealthy things like highly processed foods. I'm, I go, I go a little further with this stuff, but that would be where to start. Cut out the processed foods, add in some good fats, fix your sleep, fix your water, you know, get outside, get sunlight. Everyone's deficient in vitamin D, which is extremely crucial to a million processes in, in your body. So get that sunlight, you know, I would say that's like a solid place to start is just do some of those things and see how you feel. Or, or any, even fasting too, intermittent fasting, like, um, you know, try the bulletproof coffee thing in the morning. Like don't eat since dinner and then at, you know, eight, nine, 10 a.m. or whatever, have bulletproof coffee, which is fat only, meaning you're still fasted from the uh, from carbs and protein, which turn into basically sugar in your body, uh, and then your brain can be running on that fat as fuel rather than on glucose, which glucose is very short term, up and down. You get you go up, you crash, kind of like a fad product on Amazon. Whereas with ketones, you're kind of running just this like stable flow where you can, like, you have no blips in energy. <laughs> Paul says Matt's health hacks. The next course taking pre orders. <laughs> that's that's a joke, but. I don't know. No, no, Matt, not keto. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty keto. Uh, but, I, but I'm trying to give some tips that would be like to start because I think keto is like, keto is like jumping kind of all in. Um, I do, I still do like cyclic keto. Like I don't do deep keto for super prolonged periods of time, though I actually am planning in the next few weeks to do a prolonged fast, which that's a whole nother rabbit hole. There are a million benefits of fasts, like literally not eating at all. Um, which may sound crazy to some people, but there's a ton of benefits. Uh, 
So yeah, I'm going to be doing that with a bunch of friends. Maybe if anybody, any biohackers or aspiring, aspiring biohackers follow me, like, and would want to even join in and do it at the same time as me, that would be probably fun just for accountability and kind of like having a little group. Uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to open it up to people like that, but I, I already have like six or so friends locally that we're all going to be fasting at the same time. So I'm planning on doing a four or five day fast, not eating for that entire period. Um, with a minimum of like three days or so. But if you're just starting out, you know, do like a one day or a two day or something like that. I've done it before, but I'm planning on a four or five day fast really soon. How much discount do you offer in your Facebook ads for your product launch? For a launch, you're gonna go with a deep discount for that. The last ones I've experimented. So either 80, 85 or like 90%, like go deep for those ones because that's the intention for those ones. Now that said, and why I don't have a very exact direct answer is because I'll run them for different purposes. So sometimes I might run a 25% off or a 20% off because that's a different that's a different strategy than doing like the deep discount sort of launch. If you're doing something super aggressive, you might have to go, you're gonna have to go real deep with it. So try it, see what the sort of sweet spot is for your coupons to actually be claimed. Samer says, hot, wearing blue blocking glasses right now. That's awesome. Sweet. Blue blocking glasses are old school. Zero to wellness, of course. Don't use aluminum foil. Use fluoride for your toothpaste. Use ghee instead of regular butter. Yeah, I mean, butter is, I, I, I use grass-fed butter. I do use grass-fed ghee a lot. Um, but if you're sensitive to like the trace amounts of casein protein, I don't eat any casein except for in grass-fed butter, which is very minimal. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I agree on aluminum. There, aluminum has no place in your body. Uh, it's in a lot of deodorants. Uh, fluoride definitely has a whole host of issues going along with it, so be careful of that. Facts, we gotta come, become human again. Yeah, I'm all about it. Like, it's just about doing things to be, to getting back to your natural state, you know? It's not about doing crazy things. It's just about like, whoa, we're out of whack. Like, we gotta do things just to get back to our human body, you know? There's a lot of stuff mess up. I hope you are not eating dead animals. Uh, I don't know if I want to open that can of, you know, mess because there's a lot of controversy, but I definitely do. And I think that that's part of being human too. Like, I mean, you can totally not, I'm totally cool with that, but you know, sure there's messiness that goes along there, but that is definitely part of our evolution as humans. So I'll leave it at that. I have no, I, I totally understand the moral, arg ar moral arguments of it, but I just think health wise and I could go down a huge conversation about this, but it's probably not the time or the place right now. But I, I love, I, I'm totally down because I, um, I think about it in a certain way. You know, it's not like, it, 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 I don't know. That's it for now. <laughs> but, but it's a, it's a good topic to to dive into for sure. I did a five day water fast, felt amazing throughout, slept less because you apparently your body doesn't need it. Just naturally woke up earlier, feeling well and rested. Yeah, and you also get tons of time to like work. You get a ton of focus because you spend so much time just thinking about eating and what you're gonna make and I have to go to the store and what are we gonna, like all this stuff is like mentally fatiguing. So it's kind of nice to just like not eat for a while. You're just like, whoa, I have a lot of time. And you start, there's an unpleasant period about two days in, that's when you run out of glucose and then you're going into full ketosis. Once you're in full ketosis, then you feel great. Uh, you, you'll probably have extra energy than normal even, which is crazy to think after you haven't eaten for three days, but it's true. There are good documentaries on benefits of fasting on Netflix and Amazon Prime. Yeah, I haven't, uh, I don't think I've watched those, but I'm sure there's some good ones that would be like a good intro to this for people. What's the earliest you have seen people able to pay themselves from business, from Amazon business, I assume? Um, I'm sure some people have done it within a few months, but I don't think it's optimal because you need to keep that cash in there to grow. So it's possible to pay yourself a little bit soon if it's profitable right away. But I think it just really severely, like keeping that money in the business at the beginning is gonna have exponential returns because it's allowing you to grow that much faster. So I would, I would stay away as, I mean, not stay away from profits, but like stay away from thinking of it as your money right away. Like keep it in the business for as long as you can and do other things to fund your lifestyle at the beginning. I seriously want to alter my diet to help my focus and energy. As you start talking about this stuff, my ADD kicks in and I'm back tabbing over to Reddit. <laughs> help. Yeah, um, I mean, I still do that too. That, that's a whole other thing besides diet though. I think meditation helps a lot with that. Just getting your focus back, 
you know, getting your mental your mental chatter to slow down, not to slow down, but to, to be able to turn it off when you want to and just be in the present and be okay with a little bit of silence. Um, that's a great practice meditation. And there's actually a ton of like real scientific benefits. Like I have a, for those that don't know, like I have a background, like I, I have a degree in psychobiology. So it's not like I just completely made all this stuff up, but literally, for example, meditation increases, this is studied, increases BDNF, which is brain derived neurotrophic factor, which allows your brain to create new neuron connections, which is important. So meditation literally does that. So yeah. Do you ever source products in the US? Yeah, actually, um, not very many, but uh, one small product line of mine is sourced in the US, yeah. What vinyls do you have, Matt? <laughs> yeah, you noticed the record player. Um, well, I'm mostly, I have, I have, um, I'm mostly into like experimental electronic music for the most part. I have a lot of Flying Lotus, um, Boards of Canada, um, I have Hot Chip, The Books, Animal Collective. Um, those are just some that come to mind. Burial, uh, Teebs. Uh, what else do I have on vinyl? Yeah, all the Boards of Canada ones. Those are, that's like my most, those are like my prized possessions, but then they did a repress a few years ago. So now you can buy it new. But when I bought them, they were the originals and nobody could find them. They were going for like hundreds of dollars a piece and stuff. And it was super cool. But. <clears throat> Start doing live streams, videos, or on talking more about becoming healthy again. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm so excited right now that you guys are asking these questions because this stuff, I, I love, I mean, like, I love this stuff. Like, I, yeah, so keep the questions coming and I'll keep talking about it. Um, absolutely, like, I love these types of discussions. Like I said earlier, though, I'm, I'm working on getting better at articulating these things. I've kind of honed down my Amazon talk, but I'm still learning to, like, figure out how to like start people on that journey. I don't, I don't like finding like what's the good first little step, but yeah. Speaking of old school, do you believe in a diet that is coordinated with your blood type? I don't know anything about that. Um, I kind of, I kind of doubt it. I mean, I don't know. There's probably some rare blood types that maybe, but I don't, I think blood type seems like something that wouldn't be that correlated. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but that's probably not where I would look for the biggest impact in terms of like genetics and things like that. So just got here. Are you going to post the replay? Yeah, the, re the replay will always be up on my YouTube channel. And once again, I'll throw in a little quick reminder here that the, uh, that the prime day special for zero brand is the first link in the description that's ending this Saturday night. So that's only about 30 hours from now. That's a real timer on the page. It is real. So uh, you know, don't think that it's going to show the same thing the next day. That's a real timer. So I just don't want people to miss out that want to miss out. So I'm just giving a few reminders because I know people jump around in the video and stuff like that. So yeah. Brad also says my mind runs a million miles a minute. Yeah. Um, for me, that's all about, I, I think meditation, journaling, um, and sleep are going to be like your biggest ones for that aspect. And there's definitely diet things that have a big impact. Obviously eating a lot of sugar can have huge impacts there. Anything infl in, anything inflammatory is going to cause potential issues like that too. And a million other potential health issues. What are some personal hygiene products? Oh, speaking of biohacking, what are some personal hygiene products that you use? For example, what's a good natural deodorant? Um, I use a deodorant that I actually buy on Etsy. It's like some homemade type of thing. Um, I've been buying it for a couple of years. I don't know the name off the top of my head, uh, but you could ask me that one. Um, uh, like toothpaste, I'll, I use like the Dr. Bronner's one. Um, for like my hair, for example, the, right now I don't have anything in my hair. It's just like, yeah. I, and I'll use, sometimes I won't always even use shampoo, only like every few days or every once in a while. Um, and if I do, I use this like very natural one that Jessica buys. I also don't know the brand name, but yeah, I mean, that kind of is about it. Um, oh, like hand soap. I get this brand. It's called like South of France. I found it at Sprouts. It's very clean. There's nothing in it. But yeah, changing your soaps, your dish soaps, all that type of stuff is definitely a really good first place to start. Aaron Doolittle, I just got the course, Matt. Thank you. Awesome, dude. I'm excited. I'll accept you into the Facebook group right after this live stream. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. A few more questions. We're almost at an hour. Um, 
bravo, health comes first. I agree, I'm all about it. Like, we're doing this business stuff for life optimization, as I would say, for lack of a better term. You're doing business to make your life better. To me, I dramatically do not understand. I, I would almost go as far as to say that I have nothing in common with the person that wants to make all this money in business, but then go blow it on things that are just basically killing themselves. Like, I, I just, it's sad, but like, they have other problems they have to work on. And for me, it's all about just being the best that I can be. And I think wealth is an important aspect of that. I think health is an important aspect of that. I think chilling and having free time and stuff like that. Oh crap, did my camera just die? Oh shit. Well, that'll be a good fun end. Um, I'll jump in the chat for a second, guys. Um, that's hilarious, that's a really uh, funny way to end it. I, I, it's funny too, because I just bought the thing to have continuous power, but I didn't use it on this live stream, my bad. I thought it would last. Anyways, guys, link is in the description. I can't point because you can't see me right now, but I'm pointing down. I, can you see it? I'm pointing down. Just trust me, I'm pointing down right now. The link is down there, check it out. Um, get in before the Saturday, or if you're watching this six months ago from now, as you heard from people in there, it's worth more than the, the normal price, so I'm super excited. See you guys in there, and I'll see you in the next video.